What is up everyone? Today on UDVS we're going to cover some of my favorite SketchUp extensions and how I use them in my day-to-day -day workflow as an urban designer. Let's hop right in. Sketchcation.com offers their own plugin store which is equivalent to the extension warehouse native to SketchUp. Their website however offers a wider variety of advanced plugins that can't always be found inside of SketchUp's extension warehouse. Here you have the choice to directly download the .rbz files and manually install them into SketchUp. Or alternatively, you can download the extension manager plugin and search and install while inside of SketchUp. Just download the file and then inside of your extension manager plugin, you can go over to install new plugins and download the file this way. This gives you the ability to directly install your Sketchication plugins into SketchUp and your files will automatically be directed into folders inside of your C drive. InterAuth Face Creator is one of my favorite plugins and can be found inside of the SketchUp extension warehouse. One of the biggest frustrations within SketchUp is not being able to generate faces from your line work. This plugin greatly reduces the amount of time it takes to generate faces, assuming of course that you have clean, coplanar line work within closed loops. This plugin comes in especially handy when importing lots of CAD line work or to quickly generate faces after drafting and plan view inside of SketchUp. You can access this extension by going to the extension drop down menu, but I would encourage you all to make this a keyboard shortcut. I use Shift-D personally. Our next plugin is Selection Toys by TomTom. Tom. This plugin works inside of the right click drop down menu and provides a whole slew of additional selection options that can help you to more easily select or deselect elements inside of your model. I use this plugin a lot to reduce faces when I'm still working in plain view and I don't yet want to see SketchUp generate faces. This helps you to delete faces without deleting the outer line workaround. This can also be useful when you wish to group and layer repetitive components inside of your model. Trees and street elements tend to quickly make the model messy and being able to quickly highlight all the similar components can be a major time saver. Working well in conjunction with Face Creator is Edge Tools by TomTom. Tom. We all know the struggle of trying to clean up sloppy CAD line work and port it into SketchUp. Before you go and manually hash up your model and try to connect those corners that don't quite meet, give Edge Tools a try. This plugin has a feature which will visually highlight any open line segments and gives you the option to delete or extend the lines based on the length parameters that you type into the lower corner. Trying to manually find all the tiny gaps in a model this size could have easily taken me hours. Edge Tools also created true fillets when extending the lines, which ensures more perpendicular corner joins. It is worth noting though that this may take a few passes before getting the finalized results. I go back and forth on the close gaps length and always check the unique conditions before I close every gap. Some line work may need to be deleted when no other solutions of connecting are presented. Another feature inside of Edge Tools is the Divide Faces. This tool creates true offsets of a line within a closed surface and crops the lines so that they do not extend outside of the face border. I use this when subdividing townhouse lots, sometimes when creating parking lines, and a handful of other times when I need things to be evenly divided. My shortcut for this one is the spacebar since I use it so frequently. When I'm ready to finalize parking lots, there's no better extension for creating parking lines than using the parking tool by Smustard. Just set your parameters of your parking and then grab the two points. I usually make a point to offset a line 18 feet out of the curb and then I put this on a def points layer. Then when I'm drawing my parking lines, I put them on a separate detail layer so that my parking lines don't show as the thick outside border lines and I can easily turn off the def point layer. Next, we're going to take a look at the Bezier spline, which can be found on the Sketchcation extension store. You may also be prompted to download the accompanying libfredo 6, which provides the additional coding language needed to allow the extension to run. Once installed, 
It reads as BZ Toolbar, so don't be confused by the name if you can't find it. This plugin fixes the annoying issue SketchUp has of not being able to turn off snaps. Bezier Spline gives you a true polyline alternative. I use this when tracing the perimeter of wooded areas or showing other organic shapes in my site plans. The lines come in as curves once complete, which keeps everything nice and clean. I also find the F spline useful when tracing or creating water surfaces like rivers and ponds. Path Copy by Smustard provides you a way to equally arrange components along a preselected curve. First, offset the desired path, and then make sure it is a singular curve by using the Weld Edges feature of SketchUp 2020, or other weld plugins if you have a version older than 2020. Select the Path Copy tool, then the curve, then type in the distance between each component. Lastly, select the component. If your path length is not equally divisible by the number you typed in, you might be left over with a little bit of additional line, but usually that's no big deal. This plugin is great for arranging street trees, lampposts, and other street elements. If you have building footprints from a CAD file or GIS data, you'll probably want to extrude them to create some urban context in your drawings. This can be way too tedious to do with the native push-pull tool. I like to use Frito's joint push-pull tool and extrude all of my building footprints in one or two passes depending on the amount of buildings. First, I will grab all the faces, click once, type in my distance, and then hit enter. Then I just sit back and let my machine finish the rest. Don't forget at the end, you need to press enter to confirm. If you then want all of these buildings to be their own groups, try using loose to groups by Chris Fulmer. Pre-select all the geometries you wish to group and run the command from the dropdown, and the plugin will auto group all singular disconnected geometries for you. Texture Positioning by Inroth allows you to quickly rotate and align textures with a little more control than the native texture features, which is available on your right-click dropdown. This plugin is super useful when prepping your materials for renderings and works great when aligning textures to an edge. We all know the frustrations when you finish placing your trees or entourage in plan view just to find out that none of it's touching the ground plane below when you look in perspective. Drop GC by Smustard allows you to drop all groups and components to their respective surface below, according to their axis point. Sometimes this might take a few passes though when components overlap. Whenever working with trees in SketchUp, reducing the repetitive patterning of limbs and vegetation is often a difficult task. Using a Scale and Rotate Multiple by Chris Fulmer quickly gives that nice bit of undulation needed when producing renderings. I usually use the random feature and typically stay between 0.8 and 1.2 on scale and between 5 and 15 degrees on rotation. That's all for this episode of UD Best. If this video helped you out, please hit the like button below and share this video with a friend or colleague. Also, don't forget to subscribe to see more urban design tips and tricks with UD Best. Thanks for watching.